And we are live. It's Dr. J here in the house with Evan Brand. Evan, hope you had a great new year, great holiday season so far. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into skin issues, dealing with skin issues coming the winter time, all the different things that may happen due to dryness, cold, lots of sweets from the holidays and the new years, all that stuff. Let's dive in, man. How you doing? Doing well. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to everybody. This is the first podcast of 2021. Hooray. We need to like clap for a minute. This yeah, is exciting. I love it. 2021. Love it. All right. So uh, skin issues. Well, I was telling you about my daughter, Jenna, my little one, 19 month old. She was having some really dry skin on the back of her arms and legs. And so we've done a couple of things to help her, which is pretty cool. So I'll share that right off the bat and then we'll dive into right. some more root cause stuff. So we really upped up her fish oil. We were giving her about, it was two squirts of a liquid and it was a professional version. So I don't remember the milligrams, but we just doubled her dose. So we just kind of doubled her, doubled the normal dose of omegas. And that seems to help, especially if we think what's happening is like a keratosis polaris, which is a common situation. And then secondly, we did a Bobo Botanicals brand and it was called a colloidal oatmeal lotion and it was fragrance free. And it's mainly just like shea butter. We tried coconut oil topically. That's always kind of my first go-to for skin issues, but it didn't touch it. It didn't help it at all. But when we got this colloidal oatmeal Bobo Botanical product, it was a game changer. And no, this podcast is not sponsored by them, but hey, if you want to sponsor us, reach out. It's a great product. I'd love to share it with more people. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So we have the, the keratosis polaris, which is where the keratin kind of just accumulates in the pores and, and you kind of get this bumpy chicken skin feeling, usually like on the back of the arms, on the butt and stuff, right? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, that's the keratosis, right. The KP. Yeah. Yep. And you're saying that the omega-3s really help that. Omega-3s really make oh, yeah. a big difference and help improve um, the extra keratin deposits in the pores. Yeah. My wife had it too, real bad when we first started dating and we've got her on like two to four grams a day of omegas and her back of her arms feel perfectly smooth now. I mean, of course we got her gut better. We got her diet better, but I honestly think the biggest factor, the biggest variable was the omegas. Yeah. You know, extra omega threes can make a big difference. Also good zinc, extra zinc too can also help. That's really good to note. So we also talk about skin diet plays a big role. So we have to kind of rule out things like gluten, extra refined sugar can feed yeast and bacteria. And these things can produce you know, various mycotoxins or endotoxins that can put stress on the liver and the body. And you may see the skin re reacting as a means to that. You may see skin issues, breakouts as a means of that. Um, also, large amounts of sugar can cause insulin, which can cause uh, insulin surges, which can cause extra sebum and sebum can cause can feed um, bacteria on the skin, which can create more acne and more skin inflammation. Also, things like gluten can potentially drive autoimmune reactions like eczema, psoriasis, potentially even rosacea issues. So you got to look at dairy, you got to look at gluten, you got to look at refined sugar that could be driving a lot of that insulin that could be feeding a lot of the microbes, the fungal, the yeast, the bacterial overgrowth, which can obviously affect the skin too. Yeah. Yeah. So what about eggs? I think that's important to mention too. I personally feel that pulling out eggs is a good strategy for people if they're unsure of what's happening with their diet and reactions that eggs may be a culprit. And then also conventional dairy. I know that was a big culprit for me. I would like to cheat on it a little bit and do like some grass fed cheese every once in a while. But then even that sometimes I'll notice a skin reaction to it. Yeah. So eggs could definitely be a role. So if we're unknown, I, I'd probably want to go autoimmune out of the gates. No grains, legume, dairy, nut seeds, nightshades, or eggs. And keep the sugar down just so we're not overfeeding bacteria and yeast, which could be causing skin issues, like I mentioned earlier. So that kind of be a first step. Um, I always want to look at omega-3s, right? Because that can help the KP, the keratosis polaris. That can also just help inflammation. Um, your, your skin needs really good healthy fat. So if you're a female and a lot of your skin issues tend to be more based around your cycle, I tend to like fats like borage or black currant seed oil, which are GLA omega-6 fats, a, a good omega-6, but it can, these kind of omega-6 like GLA fats can really help decrease a lot of the, um, the sebum and a lot of the stuff that may clog the pores of the skin. So I do like a lot of the black currant seed oil. It can be very, very helpful for women's skin issues. That's excellent out of the gates. Usually women tend to help it more, but if you're a guy and you have more of the KP or the bumps, that's where really up in the omega threes can make a big, big difference. Yeah. Awesome. How about detox pathways? Maybe we should mention that. I think just supporting the liver I've seen personally, especially with kids, 
when we see skin issues, we'll come in with some liver support. If it's a kid who can't take pills, we'll give them some kind of a liquid liver support tincture. And I've noticed a big difference, especially under the eyes. You know, if we're talking skin, we're not just talking like bumps on the arms. We're not just talking acne. We're talking possibly like dark circles under the eyes. That's often, at least in Chinese medicine, they say dark circles under the eyes is liver. And I've actually noticed that correlate quite well. When we bring up liver support, dark circles under the eyes go away. So if you're a woman every morning, you're doing your makeup and here you are doing your powder foundation or whatever the heck you're putting on under your eyes, you might not have to do that if you just support your liver. It's funny how women, they can just cover stuff up with makeup, but man, we're not going to cover up it. So we're going to see the dark circles. We need to treat it root cause. We're not just going to you know, put some powder on it. Oh yeah. And so with the we call it allergic shiners. So what, what you see is it's a lot of lymphatic pooling. So you have a lot of lymph in the face area. And a lot of times what you see is the pooling of the lymph right under the eyes. And a lot of times that's going to be food allergies. Just go on Google, type in allergic shiners. Okay. And that's a lot of times because of, it's not like an aging thing. It's a lot of lymphatic stress because of certain foods. So like I mentioned, cut a lot of those big foods out, see how much that helps decrease the lymphatic pooling. You can also do things to support the lymph, right? You can do rebounding. You can do whole body vibration. You can drink ginger or burdock tea or SEAC tea, things that naturally red clover tea, red root tea, these things are naturally support the lymph that can be helpful. But if you're doing that and you're still eating foods that are inflammatory, that may still kind of counteract it. So ideally, you know, support the lymph and cut out some of those commonly offending foods that may really help decrease that pooling underneath the eyes. That's smart. I, I didn't know the, the food connection there with the allergies. So what about the darkness? Do you think that's tied into any kind of toxicity or do you think just with the lymph in general, it's just going to appear dark just because it's stagnant no matter what? Yeah. I mean, a lot of that just has to do with the lymph. I mean, we'll pull up a couple of pictures here in a minute. Um, but anytime you really increase an immune response, you're going to just get more lymphatic pooling and you're going to see it underneath kids' eyes or yeah, you know, it's interesting. You see it a lot in kids. And you also see it in, um, in adults too, but you know, it's people put the, you go to the spa, you put a cucumber over it. Why? Because the cucumber tell, tends to help disperse a lot of that lymphatic fluid. That's the reason why. But let me cool. just pull up a Google image here so you guys can see. Yeah. And so sometimes an it's dark and then right sometimes there. it's bags mm -hmm. too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you look at the one to the left though, with the little girl, that one, no, go to the, the second one there. That's what I'm used here. to seeing with people. Yeah. yeah. Just that kind of yeah. darkness. Yeah. I mean, it just has to do with the increased blood flow and lymphatic pooling. It's really what it is. Wow. And just cutting that out can make a big, 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 big difference. Yep. I wonder if there's, really there's gotta be a histamine connection to this too. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have a food allergy response, part of an allergenic response is going to be histamine. At some oh, go back up, go back up on the top there on that screen. Uh, at the very top of there, it said, Oh, this is interesting. So it was talking about indoor allergens. So mold could be a trigger of the allergic shiners too. I never even thought about that. Yeah. I mean, anytime you breathe stuff into that sinus cavity, right? Whether it's outdoor allergens like dander or cedar or things like that, um, grass pollens, right? Of course, those can be a big role. Um, but you know, you can see right here, what causes it, right? So what happens is the, the tissues and the blood vessels in the nose become swollen and a lot of excess fluid happens. People don't understand when you have a histamine reaction, a lot of times that causes things to vasodilate. So these blood vessels get swollen. So you get a lot more blood, you get a lot more lymphatic flow, um, you get a lot more immune reaction. And that's why all that stuff tends to pool right there because of all that, the sinus cavity kind of coming together right in this T-zone here. There you go. Look at that pollution and perfume and other irritants. So women, if there's any left listening to the podcast that still wear perfume, stop doing that. That's so bad. Do essential oils if you want to smell. Exactly. If you want a nice scent, do a good, a really good essential oil. Do a lavender. Um, do a, see, I'm trying to think of a bunch of other feminine herbs, or feminine essential oils. If you're a guy, do rosewood or do cedar. Uh, keep it really simple. You know, there's a couple of really good blends that are out there that I like. Frankincense is a pretty good neutral one. You know, I just tend to rely on my, my nice essential oil-based deodorant. It tends to be really clean and, um, and works well. But yeah, so you want to not put in rub toxins on your skin, toxins on the fragrances, all of that can affect bags under the eyes, all of that can affect your skin too, because it's going to just create more toxicity, more stress on your liver and your body. Now, getting back to the hormone stress, if we have more, let's say detoxification problems, that could create issues because if we have estrogen dominance, right, or we have high levels of androgens as a female, right, high levels of estrogen, estrogen dominance, and it could be 
low estrogen, but it's just higher, relatively speaking, than progesterone, right? That ratio is off that 20 to 25 to one progesterone estrogen is off. And maybe it's 10 to one or 15 to one. That ratio starts to skew that could put more stress on the liver. And if you have estrogen issues, that could be a problem. A lot of women, when they consume too much refined carbohydrates and inflammatory foods, they tend to convert more of their estrogens to androgens, testosterone, right? Testosterone is an androgen. It's in that androgen umbrella, right? And those can cause, like I mentioned, a lot more sebum and more skin issues and more acne that way. And then having prostaglandin imbalances, prostaglandin two, which is more inflammatory, um, having the one and three supported with a lot of those good fats, like I mentioned, are going to be helpful. So you're going to really help a lot of the inflammatory pathways with good fish oils. You're also going to help prostaglandin one and three, which are going to help with the skin with the black currant seed and the borage oil. So those can be very helpful too. Good, good call. Also, when we're coming in with detox support, you mentioned estrogen, we're going to come in with like some phase two detoxification support anyway. So we may come yes. in with something to help with glucuronidation, maybe some calcium deglucurate. So you wouldn't yes. think of it like your average person, maybe even a naturopath or a functional doc is probably not even going to think calcium deglucurate for skin issues. But if you think of the mechanism of helping with estrogen dominance, it may be a game changer. And then let's go into the infections a bit. I think and then this also is calcium deglucurate could help with some mold too. If there's any mold exposure, that could also help bind up to mold too. Totally. Yeah. Binders plus a little calcium deglucurate. I think you're on your way. Let's, let's yeah. hit on infections. I'm surprised you and I haven't brought this up. Here we are this far in. We haven't thought about infections. I mean, that was a big one for me. I think my face was already better, but I was still suffering quite a bit when you and I first uh, be became friends. My skin was still not very good because of all my gut infection history. Yeah, I think you were also still consuming some higher quality dairy that may have been a problem. So some people that if you're doing a lot of cheese or like milk, even if it's raw, right, and good quality, you may still have a problem with that, even if it's really good, clean dairy. Usually butter or ghee tends to be okay because there's less casein, less lactose in there, almost none. But if you're doing other stuff, it could be a problem. W was that an issue, Evan? Do you remember the dairy being a problem? Man, you remember Central Market and all their amazing cheeses. I would do yeah. some of those grass-fed organic cheeses. It wasn't yeah. often, though. I'll be honest. It would maybe be like a chunk of cheese every few days or so, but I think even that was too much for me. Yeah, and you know, I tell you, I can do well with butter or ghee, but I do not do well with milk or cheese as well. What I happens? Start to get gassy. I tend to get loose stools, and then skin issues will tend to manifest um, shortly after, for sure. So even high quality dairy, not that good. Now the fat based dairy, right? Butter and ghee tends to be different because it, it's primarily ninety nine percent fat. There's very little casein. Uh, very little lactose, which is the sugar in dairy, and so of course ghee is even cleaner than butter because there's virtually zero casein versus virtually zero um, lactose in there. So that tends to be a lot better. I'm just curious, how do you do with whey protein? Are you okay with it? Yeah, I do okay with whey because whey is 99% casein and lactose free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. so it tends to be a lot better. Yep, I do okay with it. My favorite is going to be collagen, you know, high quality grass fed collagen peptide. So I do my true collagen blend, which works great because there's really, it's, it's in a peptide form. So there's no other larger proteins in there it's really clean and well broken down. So that tends to do from a powder standpoint, does really well. Awesome. All right. Well, let's just talk a couple minutes about infections. I think this is an important part to consider. If you have skin issues, I've worked with countless small children and teenagers, and we always are going to look at the potential for infections. There's nothing in particular. I'm not going to say, Hey, it's got to be blasto or it's got to be this or that. I would just say in general, any type of dysbiosis, bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, candida, H. pylori, the whole party that usually happens together is going to be a potential. And I think the one of the big mechanisms here is just to reduce stomach acid by the H pylori. So I think enzymes to fix the skin are also another important strategy we're going to implement. Yeah. Anytime we have indigestion and our protein and our, our fat and carbohydrate molecules of the food that we're eating are larger and not broken down, you're going to have intolerances. Food's not going to be broken down all the way in those large globules, proteins, fats, et cetera, can get into the bloodstream, create more immune reaction. Also, there's going to be a, a fermentation that happens when those food molecules are not broken down all the way, and that can create bacterial overgrowth. And we know hydrochloric acid does have a way of being a disinfectant in a way. It really decreases bacteria and yeast load in the intestines. And if we have low levels of acid, um, it's kind of like missing the natural disinfectant on your table, right? that, you know, that can help clean things up in your body. So that, that's definitely a real thing there. 
And the other component I would say is be, being, because we, we're kind of talking about the holidays and Christmas, is it can get very dry in the wintertime in a lot of places in this country. And so having a really clean moisturizer can be helpful. Now it depends. So if we're just talking about, you know, person with dry skin, we may just choose a really, really good clean shea butter or coconut oil, or just a really clean um, moisturizing product from a high quality company. And you can use Skin Deep Cosmetic Database, Environmental Working Group Database to look at healthy skin products that, that have really good ingredients in there. I like to use the Marie Veronique products. I like their Lipid Barrier uh, Complex and their Barrier Restore Serum. They work amazing. I use that on my skin. And I had one child that had eczema. He's kind of gotten over it. He's done really well. We've kind of cleaned out his diet and his mom's diet too. So things like salicylates could be a potential problem outside of just your autoimmune foods. And then we used a really clean hypoallergenic moisturizer called Vanaply. Again, it's not anything like nutritious for the skin, but sometimes when the skin's inflamed immunologically from an autoimmune skin issue, sometimes the skin just needs moisture and not things that could potentially stimulate the immune system. So sometimes a clean thing like that can be very helpful. So Vanaply is very good. Uh, there's another product called Le Che uh, Poche. I'll have to pull it up. It's a French brand of a moisturizer and that works um, very good as well as providing just really good moisture. And then sometimes we may have to change the environment. Sometimes it gets very, very dry, you know, 20, low 20% in humidity. We may have to add a humidifier into the kid's room or into the adult's room to get a little bit more humidity in the room. The big X factor is don't just leave it on nonstop because you can actually create mold with a humidifier if it's un unchecked, un unchecked, uncharted. So you have to make sure that if you're adding humidity to the room, it's for a season, it's for a reason, it's for a short period of time. And you may want to have a humidity detector in the room just to make sure you don't get above, you know, 50% where mold could grow. Yeah, you know what I was thinking? I've never seen it. Maybe it exists. It'd be cool to have a humidifier that actually has an hygro a hygrometer built in. So like you could set your 40, you know, 40% and then you're pumping humidity in and then it Bingo. hits 40 and shuts off. That'd be super cool. I 100% agree. Yep. I 100% yeah, so I, I, th I, th I think the x uh would be good too for just to implement. This is a tangent, not related to skin, but the xylitol spray for the sinuses are, is awesome too, because that can help moisturize it. And the x is kind of a good natural antimicrobial, if you will, it, it can help a little bit with the, the sinus cavity, but yeah, back yep. to the skin. So how we're going to investigate this with people is we're going to start with diet. We're going to come in and say, probably remove the eggs, definitely get off the dairy, get off the gluten. And then we're going to come in and do stool testing. We're going to do urine organic acids so we can look at all the different bacteria that may not show up. You see, sometimes what happens, I had it happen last week. We had a guy who on the organic acids, he looked pretty good. There wasn't any kind of bacterial overgrowth evidence, but when we got to his stool test, he had Prevotella and Klebsiella and all sorts of bacteria off the chart. And so if someone's on an extreme budget, maybe one test would be sufficient. But in most cases, we're going to try to get the full picture because it's hard to make a puzzle complete if you don't have all the pieces. And so that's really why we're going to want to look at multiple things. And then as you mentioned, environment, we're going to factor that into and then potentially improving the indoor air quality. So what if you are having some sort of an allergic reaction to your environment, whether it's mold or dander or pollen or whatever, something like a really good charcoal filled uh, air filter, it's going to be a game changer, possibly putting charcoal in your body, you know, supplementing with binders and then addressing any infections we see supporting the liver, bumping up omegas. I think stress has a factor. We talked about hormones. We talked about the estrogen. We talked about glucuronidation. I think those are really the main variables. Do you think we're missing anything yeah. else? No, I think we hit it pretty well. My only other component is if you have eczema or psoriasis and your skin's overly dry and you're trying to get the dryness down while you're fixing the root issue. I mentioned the, the Vanaply, Vanacream product being good. And the other one was the La Roche Posse and it's the Lipicar Balm is, is a nice one. It's just a lot of moisture, which can decrease a lot of the dryness. And then when the dryness is decreased, that decreases the itching. And when the itching is decreased, that can help decrease a lot of the inflammation. But you have to make sure a lot of people in the eczema, psoriasis kind of Facebook groups, because I follow a lot of them just to read what they're doing. They want a magic solution. They want just something to rub on their skin and have it all go away. But that's never how it is. So you typically have to get to the underlying issue with foods and gut stuff too. So make sure if you do something that's a lotion, that's topical, make sure you're not ignoring the internal stuff. Well, that one sounds so fancy. It's got to be good just based on the way you pronounce the name of it. 
I know, like a nice little long French name there. We'll uh -huh. put the uh, Amazon links in the description so you guys can access it. And then you mentioned the other one that had the oatmeal in there that was really clean. What was the product? Yeah, I'll give you the link to it. It's like a, there's like a kid's like fragrance free version. It's like a colloidal oatmeal product. It began with a B, right? Yeah, Babo. it's Babo. Yeah, Babo. let me look. I've got it here. Uh, it was like colloidal oatmeal lotion. Man, this stuff is awesome. I tell you, my wife's like, honey, this look at look at her skin. And I was feeling these areas on our little girl's skin. I'm like, man, it's it's crazy. And uh, yeah, here it is. Nine bucks. Can't beat it. So it's called Babo Sensitive Hydra Lotion. Chamomile, Calendula. And then like I said, it's got the colloidal oatmeal. I'll put you the link in the, uh, I'll put it got in it. your chat here if you want to look at it. And is there any worries at all with that due to gluten sensitivity in the oats? I don't think so. We haven't seen any type of issue. I know there's a possibility. You've got that Avena Sativa kernel flour. So it does have the oat flour in there. I mean, if I thought there was some autoimmune possibility, we may stay away with it, but it's a pretty rare situation. I've only seen a few people where we thought that they were going to be sensitive enough to it, you know, that we should pull it out or find something without oats. I'm not doing like oatmeal bass or anything like that. You know, this is just like the, the spot of maybe a, a quarter at most on the areas. And that's like maybe once a day, if that and you're just using it kind of here and there to kind of knock it down. It's not like a staple. No, no, no. We're not lathering day. her in it or anything. It's just like a spot yeah. treat is, what, is all we're using it for. I yeah, know some people sense. get crazy with lotion. They're lathering the whole thing. No, I think I'd probably stay away in that case, but for spot treats, probably okay. That's smart. Excellent, man. So I think we hit a lot of the good skin stuff today. We talked about some of the hormone stuff with female hormones. We talked about some of the androgen component and how that can tie into insulin. Um, don't forget, guys, high levels of insulin can drive excess estrogens in guys, and that can cause other issues too and put stress in the liver. We talked about some mold stuff. We talked about uh, allergen issues, food allergen stuff, and some of the eye stuff. We talked about the humidity issues in the winter where it gets drier, um, maybe get a humidifier, really monitor the percent humidity. If you can get one that has a gauge that test the environment and let's say it doesn't go above 40% or 35%. That's better because that way you kind of have a limiter on there. It doesn't go over the top. We at one point um, had the humidifier on too much. This was years ago and we noticed a little bit of mold in, in the carpet nearby and we never made that mistake again. So if you use a humidifier, like put a timer on it, like an hour or two, boom, have it go off. Don't leave it on all the time. Be smart about it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I mean, you think about a humidifier, right? Tip, tip, typically, people are going to just sit it on like a wood night nightstand or something. And then that wood is probably just absorbing all that moisture. It sounds like a recipe for disaster if you overuse it for sure. Exactly. So you maybe like if you can, if your kid has some humidity issues, skin issues, maybe put it on for an hour or two at night, put a timer on it, done. Yeah. Uh, and that way it's not going to go the whole night, but it'll provide a little bit of relief and, and uh, help the mucous membranes that may be a little bit overly dry. And then also, you know, don't over bathe, don't over with your soaps, your shampoos, your conditioners, make sure everything's clean there. Don't over soap yourself. I mean, you're not, you don't need to lather your whole body in soap. I think that's an easy one regarding hand soaps. I mean, I know a lot of the conventional ones are going to dry out hands and skin. So we got to mention that also water filters are key. That's why you and I both have whole house water filters because the chlorine and the trihalomethanes and all the irritants in the tap water can irritate yes. your skin in the shower. That's a big one. Yeah. So if you have a lot of chlorine and a lot of chemicals in the water, that can be very irritating on your skin. So we really want to make sure that that is addressed with a high quality filter and that will take stress off your skin a ton really well. I and even so travel kinda, with it. I even bring like the Berkey or a comparable shower filter. Like when we went to Florida last winter, I brought a portable shower filter with us, man. It was a game changer because, you know, we wanted to fill up the bathtub for the kids because the chlorine was so strong. So luckily we just filled the tub with the shower head filter and it was awesome. So we didn't irritate the kids and they weren't just breathing in chlorine. That's good. That's really good. And the only other thing I would just say beyond that is just making sure you're digesting in your fats and proteins well. So people think, oh, I'm going to just drink a whole bunch of water. That'll get moisture to my skin. It's like, well, you need a good fat carrier to bring that hydration to the skin. A lot of times the skin and the, and you know, these, they're that layer, there's a hydrophobic layer in the skin. So it's, it, it does not like water. So you need fat to kind of bring that moisture to that skin. So if you don't have enough fat, you will get very dry skin and dry skin can get more irritated and you tend to scratch that dry skin more. And then that scratching creates inflammation and then inflammation just, it's a kind of a self 
the feeding cycle. So you really want to make sure you have good, healthy fats in there. And at least half those fats should be saturated fats, coconut oil. Um, it should be high quality grass fed animal products. Um, it should be uh, pork, pork fat, lard. And if you want to do any plant fats, keep it to high quality olive oil, avocado oil, maybe some palm, obviously coconut's going to be a great fat if it's saturated and it's plant. Um, so those are a couple of good things to do just to make sure you have good fats. And of course, if we don't have good digestion, you know, at least get in some enzymes and some HCL in the meantime, while you work on fixing your stress or fixing your, your gut in the meantime for better absorption and digestion. Yeah, the way I look at it, it's rarely going to be just a skin issue. There's going to be possibly bloating, gas, burping, uh, some type of food sensitivities, food reactions, right? Skin issues are rarely going to occur in isolation. So I think of it as a clue, right? You and I talk about clues in functional medicine. The skin is really just a clue. And then we think, oh, interesting, what's going on under the hood? So that's where we come in and do the testing. And if you need help clinically, please reach out. We would love to help. We work with people worldwide via phone, FaceTime, Skype, et cetera. We're very blessed to be able to provide lab testing to people across the globe and to provide solutions to healthcare that other practitioners and doctors have failed before. So if you need to reach out clinically, you can reach Dr. J at justinhealth.com. You can reach me, Evan Brand at evanbrand.com. And we look forward to 2021 together. So let's have some fun. Give us some comments, some questions. If you're on uh, watching, listening on Dr. J's YouTube channel, put some potential topic ideas in there. We're always open to new topics. We talk about stuff we think is important, but if you have some issues or concerns, you know, we're happy to do kind of like some Q and A stuff too. So please give us some feedback. Absolutely. And if you guys want to reach out and dive in deeper, it could be a gut issue. It could be a hormone issue. Evanbrand.com for Evan, Justin Health dot com for myself we are here to help worldwide thank you guys and i hope you guys are having a great start to 2021 and we'll be here you guys take care bye now take care